Welcome back. Hope you're having a good morning so far. Looks like the bulls are going to have a good day for sure, given that you know we're on our way to hit that 20,000 mark on the Nifty. And it's been some time coming. We've been ambling around this 19,300 to 19,500 mark. So breaking out of that range is something that the street will definitely like. Vivek is joining in first up to give us a couple of stocks that he has on his radar. IRB and IRB Invit is what he's looking at. Vivek, morning. Well, good morning. You know, both the IRB twins will remain in focus. Uh, so the company has given an update as far as the month of August and the toll collections are for the, both of the companies are concerned. Now, IRB, the August toll collection has come in at around 417 crore, which is up 24% on a year-on-year -year basis. However, it is important to note that in this particular month, there is an additional project which is there, and that is the toll collection for Hyderabad Auto Ring Road that is also added to the collection. Now, talking about IRB Invit, you know, again, steady set of numbers over here. August toll collection is at 81 crore, which is up over 11.5% on a year-on-year -year basis. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Uh, well, you know, I'm also watching out for CAMS this morning. Uh, the stock, as we know, it's India's largest mutual fund transfer agency. So they provide a lot of mutual fund services, statements, etc. They had an analyst meet over the weekend and there were a lot of positive takeaways that came in from there. So I'm going with green on the stock. The management is very confident on both the growth and the margin outlook for the business. They are market leaders currently and they say that this market leadership continues. They've guided for a 14% revenue growth and a 45% EBITDA margin in the medium term. And they expect the mutual fund AUMs itself to grow 15% over the next few years. We've seen all those headlines about how, you know, DMAT accounts have hit 10 crores now and there's so much growth in mutual fund AUMs. That will benefit them. They've reiterated their guidance to increase the share of non-mutual fund based revenues to over 20% in the medium term. So they're looking to diversify further. They say that operational efficiencies and enhanced productivity gains should drive the EBITDA margin expansion to 45%. And they also see a lot of opportunities in AIF segment because there are now rising compliance needs. So that's why, where they step in. Uh, so hence, I'm going with green over there. All right, uh, Sonia. Well, I'm also looking at Sharm Metallics because over the weekend they went ahead and they announced an OFS. For a total of around 6.3%, that's around 1.6 crore shares. So the initial offering will be around 5%. And then, in fact, they have an option to sell another 1.2% also. That's how you get the total number of around 6.3%. The shares will be offered at a discount of close to 12% in comparison to the close price that we saw on Friday. Some part of the street was anticipating maybe a discount of 5 to 6%. So when it's at around 12%, I think that, uh, you know, the street will lap this up. The OFS for investors, well, both the dates should come up. Non-retail can apply today. And retail can apply from tomorrow onwards. Remember, the promoter holding is at around 88%. So this helps them bring down their holding as well. Towards that 70% odd market will come down to the early 80s. What the company has been saying for the last many quarters is that they're looking at adding value-added steel. And they're also expanding in various verticals, which come up for you on the screen. Given their expansion plans, well, uh, the stock will be in focus. It'll open up in the red, but we'll have to see the response to the OF or OFS. But I think going by the feedback that we've seen over the last few days, this one could get lapped up. Okay, uh, Nigel, thanks very much uh, for that. That's uh, Sham Metadics for you. Now, uh, let's uh, go across to Vivek. Uh, he's got details on uh, SJV and uh, he's standing by. Vivek, morning. Well, that's right. So, LJVN is the other stock that will be in focus. So, the company's subsidy, you know, which is into renewable services, green energy services. So, LJVN Green Energy has gone ahead and signed a PPA, Power Purchase Agreement with Bakra Bees Management Board. Now, this is for the supply of solar power. And this particular project is expected to be commissioned by August 2024. This particular project was secured by the company through the competitive open bidding mechanism. And, you know, the tariff for this particular project is, has come to around 2.63 per unit. It's a material development as far as the company is concerned because it's the start of signing as well as commissioning of a certain PPA. Okay, so a new solar project is what SJV and Zam will develop. But Vivek, you're also tracking JSW Energy this morning. Why is that? Well, that's right. So the Economic Times has reported that uh, TPG, Tokyo Electric Power Company and Brookfield are actually in advanced talks with JSW Energy. And this is for buying a stake in the company subsidy, which is known as JSW Neo, which actually houses all of the renewable, renewable energy and green hydrogen projects that the company would be coming up with. Remember, JSW Neo Energy is a subsidy. And, uh, you know, what the company also does is it stores and produces green hydrogen. Uh, we reached out to JSW Energy at this point of time. You know, the only response we got was no comments. But we will wait and watch out for, you know, in case there is any development on the same. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Vivek, for joining and giving us that quick update. Let's hop across to Ekta. She's tracking a couple of more companies, namely Strides and VRR Logistics. Morning, Ekta. 
morning. Well, I'll start with strides. Uh, they have received USFD approval for a drug which is used for kidney conditions and it is an oral suspension drug. They've already received approval or they've tied up for the tablet version. So they will be launching both of these versions in the next two odd years. So the tablet will be commercialized by Q1 FI25. Oral suspension will be introduced immediately. $212 million in terms of a total market size. They say that it is going to be manufactured at their Bangalore plant. It's a complex generic, limited competition. And hence, it should probably be positive. They have also indicated they are going to be launching 60 new products over the next three years when it comes to the U.S. markets. VRI Logistics promoters sold around 35 lakh shares at 681 rupees per share. Promoter stake will now fall to around 60 odd percent. SBIMF has picked up stake in terms of that large deal that took place. They bought around 2.2 percent stake in this large trade that took place, and hence their holding has now risen. All right, take that. Thanks a lot for that. Well, let's go across to Surbi. She's tracking a couple of Adani Group stocks. She's also looking at the port stocks this morning. Uh, Surbi, good morning. Good morning. So the first one is Adani Enterprise. Now, Adani Global Singapore has signed a uh, joint venture agreement with Singapore-based company Kova Holdings. Now, this joint venture is for the sales and marketing of green ammonia and green hydrogen. The next is some port and railway stocks will be on my radar because the Prime Minister announced a launch of rail corridor between India, West Asia and Europe. Now, this corridor is going to provide a reliable and a cost-effective ship-to-rail transit network between Asia, Middle East and Europe. So, you can expect some port and railway stocks to be, uh, you know, in the green today on the back of some positive sentiment. But we don't have any details on this so far. Uh, but it's still a positive for some of these companies. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So those are a couple of stocks. Here's a quick recap in case you missed out on any stocks with positive news flow. There's IRB Infra, IRB Inuit, CAMS, SJVN, JSW Energy, Strides, Pharma, Adani Enterprises and some of these railway stocks. Well, stocks with negative news flow, there's Shah Metallics and VRL Logistics. Okay, all right. Well, those are the top stocks that we're looking at. But let's get you some brokerage notes as well uh, that, uh, you know, we've got earlier today. Ekta has gone through a few and she's joining us to give us an update on that. Ekta? Well, I'll start with the Polo Hospitals. UBS has written on it. They have a buy rating target price of 6050, which is 6050. Industry data indicates occupancy trend is improving sequentially. They expect the health co losses to reduce Q on Q on a steady basis. Morgan Stanley has written on State Bank of India. They have an equal weight rating and a target price of 670. They've reiterated their guidance of 12 to 14 percent loan growth for FY24. Goldman Sachs has written on HDFC Bank, buy rating, target price of 2051. With the ICRR withdrawal, they assess the impact would be to the tune of around 400 crores or $48 million. City has a neutral rating on Infosys with a target price of 1430. They say that the demand environment is not worsening anymore. Macquarie has written on HCL Tech. They have an outperform rating and a target price of 1520. The management is confident of the ability to meet the guidance of 6 to 8 percent growth on a constant currency basis. Equiris has written on Zomato. They've initiated with a long rating, target price of 135. They say it's a solid play on India's rapidly expanding food delivery service. Okay, thanks a lot for that, uh, Ekta. That's uh, Equitus' view on Zomato. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's also talk about the potential headwind for the markets, which hasn't hit the market just yet. But perhaps the street is taking note of that, is the move in Brent crude. And Manisha Gupta is here to give us an update on all that happened in the last 48 hours. Manisha, hi. Good morning. Morning. Thank you for that, Sonia. Well, last week we saw crude prices gain up by 2% because of the lower supplies that we saw coming from US and the Russia and Saudi Arabia output cut as well. But this week is going to be quite important. To begin with, we have started with the strength in US dollar index, which is holding at six-month highs. You also have the IEA and the OPEC reports coming in this week, and that will keep the markets jittery. But apart from that also, you have the inflation numbers coming in from US, from UK, China, and India inflation numbers coming tomorrow as well. And the street will keep an eye on that. The European Central Bank interest rate decision also happens in this week. And the markets are now working with almost a 93% chance that the U.S. Fed will not hike interest rates in, in the month of September. And that seems to be supporting commodities as well. All right, uh, Manisha, thank you very much uh, for that. We'll come back to you for more later, but uh, we'll take a break at this point in time. Prakash Devan will join in on the other side for a quick fundamental stock check. We'll also connect, by the way, with Rajesh Bahati of Cross East Capital Services and Tejas Kode of Fires, which is a broker, to talk about uh, you know, all the drama which happened in the Sensex options uh, on uh, Friday. Uh, so that's uh, coming up as well. Stay tuned 
all of that in just a bit.